Thumbs up. Excellent. Okay. So uh, the East Greenbrook School District uh, puts together its budget each year in consideration of our long range plan. And our long range plan within the district involves making sure that we are strategic, that we are identifying the resources that we need to continue to have high quality educational services to our students. We engage in both instructional and financial planning and our budget reflects not only a spending plan in terms of the expenses and the revenues that we need to provide financially next year, but a pathway to continue towards our board's goals to continue to provide an excellent district. Our board's goals include continuing to emphasize academic achievement, through reflective practice, through innovation, through accountability for results, and accountability to our taxpayers, and expanding opportunity for our students. Additionally, we try to coordinate the delivery of educational, human, and fiscal resources in a way that is aligned with our goals and in a manner that is sustainable for the long term. So we don't only look at our budget from a year-to-year -year standpoint, we look at it from a long-range perspective to make sure that we can continue to have an excellent district. Additionally, we value our positive collaborative relationships with our parents and our community, and we have developed many partnerships, not only with our parents, but with our formal organizations, such as our PTOs, our businesses within the community, our towns, and various organizations that can help us enhance education for your students. And we wanna to continue to cultivate a progressive, innovative, and safe environment for all of our students and our staff. A couple of academic achievements. The district has lots to be proud of. Over the course of the last several years, our graduation rate has continued to increase. It is currently at 96%. That is a four-year graduation rate. We are the third highest in the capital region among 84 school districts. Additionally, we are ranked ninth on several academic indicators in the capital region and we are the top rated school district in Rensselaer County, according to Albany Business Review. Columbia High School has twice been named a recognition school due to the academic achievement, Regents exam performance, and additionally, not on this slide, this year, Red Mill Elementary School was also named a recognition school. There are only approximately 13% of the schools in New York State considered to be a recognition school based on academic achievement indicators. Additionally, over the course of the last few years, in partnership with our teachers, our assistant superintendent, Jim McHugh, and our high school administration, Mr. Harkin, and the assistant principals, we have added a significant number of college credit courses, totaling now 29 college level courses. Uniquely to East Greenbush, both this year and last year, we added partnership agreements with both Sage College and Siena College to offer a three plus one pathway program. In the case of Sage Colleges, students can begin studying to be a teacher while still in high school and can complete their master's degree at Sage Colleges within a typical bachelor timeframe in four years. In the case of Siena College, students can start to work on their MBA master's in business administration while still in college and complete their MBA within four years at Siena due to the partnership agreements that we have achieved over the last couple of years. Additionally, I spoke to the community three years ago regarding the capital project. The community overwhelmingly approved a $39.7 million project which we are currently moving from phase one to phase two. We have upgraded all of the security systems within each of our district's buildings, including all of the schools, our central office, as well as our transportation center. That upgrade has included expanded video surveillance, access controls, 
as well as new technologies to enable us to respond in the event of an emergency. Additionally, we have extended that technology to law enforcement in the event of such an emergency. We've also been monitoring our enrollment. I'm pleased to report that the enrollment in the East Greenbrook School District is growing, particularly at the elementary level, and it is projected to increase from between 150 and 200 students over the next couple of years. Our budget reflects the need to adapt our staffing in order to respond to that enrollment increase. We work very closely to make sure that our employees are, are happy, are continuing to serve the district through our human resources department. School districts in New York State have been challenged regarding finding qualified and interested bus drivers. One of the accomplishments of our HR department this year was the high retention rate for our drivers in East Greenbush. Additionally, through use of a state grant called Smart Schools, we have been able to expand technology access to our students and our teachers through our one-to-one -one program, which particularly proved advantageous this year as we needed to shift very quickly to online learning and we had the technology available to do it through the Smart Schools grant purchases that we've made over the course of the last couple of years. Additionally, in partnership with the community, our schools have established backpack programs. We are providing food where needed to our students and our families in need, and we are continuing to do that during this period of time. We've initiated therapy dog programs, which have been well received and very successful, both at Belltop and at Goth Middle School. And we have offered free intramural training programs over the summer for kids who are interested in working out staying in shape, and maybe considering participating in sports from the modified to the varsity level. Uh, that's a free program funded through the district's budget. And we've also been involved in many charitable activities, including the Teal Run, which has raised over $13,000 to support ovarian cancer. This year, we emphasized social emotional health for both our students and our staff, and we've been offering workshops for our staff, but also for our parents, which have been well received and well attended. Just a number of highlights of what we've accomplished over the last couple of years. We're proud that our budget is able to support full-time school resource officers. We have an SRO at Columbia High School, funded in partnership with the East Greenbush, town of East Greenbush and the East Greenbush Police Department, and at Howard L. Goff Middle School, through an arrangement with the Rensselaer County Sheriff's Department, we have employed a full-time SRO at Goth. The budget will maintain those resource officer positions. Additionally, the phase one project, in addition to completing security systems upgrades, we have replaced fire and smoke alarm systems, which will be completed by the end of the summer in all of the district's uh, schools. And we focused, as I mentioned, on wellness, and we are promoting global awareness so that our students and our staff not only learn about uh, the uh, opportunities that are provided here in East Greenbush, but can talk about and think about the impact of their learning on a global perspective. A couple of awards to highlight, too many to mention in one slide. Columbia has won its Science Olympiad Championship regional championship for 27 of the last 28 years. We're very proud of both our high school science Olympiad team as well as our middle school team. We've been very successful and it was unfortunate that the state tournament was canceled this year due to COVID. Additionally, our indoor track team won its third consecutive sectional championship. Howard Al Goff has been recognized and rec recently as a no place for hate school due to its character education emphasis, and Citizen Janae Elementary School has had 29 students recognized this year with pride paws for ex excellence in character education and demonstrating traits such as self-control. Each year we recognize the teacher of the year. Last year we recognized a social worker for all the fine work that she does for supporting our students and our families, Maria Fontaine who uh, was recognized last year. This year, due to the unique circumstances, yesterday, the Teachers Union announced that we're recognizing our entire group of teachers for the services they have continued to render for the community. 
We also are proud of the fact that Helen Scolacci, who has made the transition very successfully to be the new Red Mill principal after having served as our Director of Pupil Personnel Services, was recognized as our Special Educator of the Year. Our long-term wrestling coach, Anthony Servadone at Columbia High School, was inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. And due to her good work as a teacher and as a community member, Green Meadow teacher Aaron Tarbox was inducted into the Columbia High School Alumni Hall of Fame. For two years in a row, we've been named a top workplace in the Capital Region by the Times Union through a survey that was done privately through a private company with our employees. We were the only school district in the Capital Region to be recognized over the course of the last two years. And that is due to uh, the morale of our staff and how they pride themselves in continuing to serve our kids. For seven years in a row, the New York State Public High School Athletic Association has recognized our student athletes with a state sportsmanship award. Not only are we competitive on the field, but our students demonstrate great character, not only in the way they conduct themselves, but also in the numerous service projects that they complete for the community. We have an excellent record of safety. That record of safety includes our transportation operation, as well as the few number of accidents that occur on school property, as well as our planning and our policies. And for 17 years in a row, Utica National Insurance has recognized East Greenwood School District as an excellence in safety school. Again, we have received that award every year for 17 years. And the New York State Comptroller indicates schools that are in fiscal stress. We are pleased that we have not been considered to be a school in fiscal stress, despite the fact that our district has received the smallest amount of state aid a school district can receive in New York State over the last three years. And that designation is due to the fine work of Mr. Edson, our business official, as well as our school board and the community's continued support for some of the budgetary methods that I'm gonna talk about later, such as utilizing reserves to purchase buses uh, for our transportation fleet. How are we going to maintain this success? That's a very big question now as we deal with what might be happening and hopefully we reopen in the fall. In order to make sure that we are a stable district, always moving forward, we monitor our tax base and the growth in our tax base. And of all of the suburban council districts, currently the tax base in East Greenbush is increasing at the third highest rate. That is due to uh, several factors, including the fact that people like to move to East Greenbush because of the quality of the community, as well as our schools. And it is also a factor that enables us to calculate the tax cap for our school district. As I mentioned earlier, our enrollment is growing. We see particularly at the elementary level, over the next five years, our enrollment is expected to increase. Slight increases at the middle school and the high school. In order to ensure that we can meet the class size expectations, as well as continue to offer elective programs and college credit courses, we adjust our budget where we can given the resources that we have available to maintain programs even when enrollment is increasing and even when state aid has been a concern for the district. You can see that over the course of time in this graph, the red line represents the amount of aid that the state formula says East Greenbush School District should be receiving. The blue line represents actually what we received. So there's more than a $2 million gap between what the formula suggests East Greenbush should receive based on our enrollment and based on our wealth factors, what we actually have received. Again, over the last three years, we've received the lowest amount of increase of state aid. And this year, due to the COVID moving into next year, our state aid is frozen at this time. And we'll talk a little bit about what may happen to state aid as we move along in the presentation. The tax cap is based on a number of factors. It's really not a 2% tax cap. This year, our tax cap uh, was influenced by CPI, the rate of consumer um, uh, growth, 
that's occurring. Uh, it's also influenced by other factors. Here in this graph, we point out that in the, on the red line, we have the CPI, which is the Consumer Price Index since 2017. And on the blue line we, is represented the amount of state aid increase that we have received. And you can see that our state aid is not even keeping pace with the cost of living. Additionally, every year our Board of Education has strived to keep our proposed budget inclusive of a tax levy increase, which is less than the New York State permittable tax cap. Every year we've done that and our budget proposed for next year will do the same. Our tax cap for East Greenbush for next year is 1.62%. Our proposed budget includes a 1.5% tax levy increase, which is the lowest tax levy increase that we have proposed to the community in five years, recognizing what is happening, but also recognizing that we need the additional approximately $900,000 in revenue reflected by that one and a half percent tax increase to continue to support our programs. Tax cap is made up of many factors. It's the property value growth. And again, we indicated that our property values are growing at the third highest rate among suburban council districts. So we're able to yield within our tax levy about $759,000 simply based on the fact that our property values are growing. Pilot agreements are payment in lieu of taxes agreements. Those are business businesses who've received approved agreements through the Rensselaer County IDA to abate a portion of their taxes to encourage economic development and employment within the region. When the pilot payments to the district increase from one year to the next, which is happening next year, the amount of money that you can raise through the tax levy decreases and so, in our case, moving forward to next year, we're going to have to deduct from the overall amount that we could raise through the levy around $810,000 because we're going to be getting that revenue through another source through pilot arrangements with businesses. Our capital spending includes principal interest on previous capital projects to ensure that our schools are safe and provide healthy environments for our kids. We pay principal and interest on monies that have been borrowed or approved projects in the past, and the capital spending is deducted from the overall limitations of the tax cap to about the tune of $83,000. And again, we mentioned the consumer price index reflects growth in the economy, which yields an additional million dollars. So these are just the components of the tax cap and how it's figured out. Uh, and Mr. Etzen does a good job of projecting that and helping me explain that every year. The budget is compared to the overall tax levy over the course of the last 10 years. Uh, this year, moving into next year, I mentioned that the tax levy increase would be one and a half percent. Although our budget is going up more than 4%, a large portion of that 4% increase is associated with state regulations which require the district to shift from short-term borrowing for previous capital projects to long-term borrowing, in which we are now paying both principal and interest. So that 4% increase is more of a function of a shift in the way our borrowing is structured, borrowing payments are structured, but the tax levy itself is only going up a proposed one and a half percent if the community approves the budget. Additionally, on an annual basis, we compare our tax rates to other districts like East Greenbush. We call these districts the suburban council districts. And we are about in the middle of the pack with our tax rate at about $18.89 per thousand of assessed value of a home. Looking at our tax levy increases over the course of the last 10 years, our tax levy increases represent the second lowest on average over a 10 year period when compared to other suburban council districts at an average of 1.83%, which in many years has been less than the cost of living. We started looking at our budget actually in December, providing a preliminary analysis of the budget to our board. And then the COVID issues 
impacted the state's economy and the prospects of a state aid reduction to our district. We were encouraged somewhat by the initial state budget that came out that used federal monies to offset a cut in state aid. And we're hoping that there'll be additional federal support for our state because the governor has projected that our budget could be, our state aid could be decreased by as much as 20%. In our district, a 20% decrease in our state aid would represent $3.4 million. And that would be a very challenging um, impact for our district. And our board would have to look at a combination of cuts as well as use of reserves to offset that cut. But for now, because we have to propose our budget to the voters, we have adjusted the tax levy in our budget by one and a half percent, and we are utilizing reserves, and we're gonna wait and see what happens. We have not proposed any teacher layoffs or any program cuts at this time within our budget until we see what may happen with our state aid. The voters on June 9th, through mail-in paper ballots only, will be able to vote on three propositions. The proposed school district budget of $99.7 million, the purchase of eight school buses through monies that have already been set aside and approved by the board and by our community, through the use of a transportation reserve to purchase eight school buses. There is a complete bus replacement plan that voters can see on our website. And we use the monies that have been saved in the budget in prior years. The community has approved this reserve when it was required to be approved. And our budget, this enables our budget to not be impacted by borrowing monies to be able to purchase buses to keep our buses safe. It's worked very well for the district and the voters will have an opportunity to approve that, which they have always done in the past. Additionally, there will be the election of three seats to the Board of Education. We have three current board members running for re-election to the board, Board President Mike Buno, Board Vice President Mark Mann, and long-term board member Kathleen Curtin are running for the board again this year. We have three seats and three candidates. The rest of the slides I'm going to present in the next few minutes relate to understanding the new voting process this year. Yesterday, the district mailed 22,000 plus ballots to all of the registered tax, uh, resident, resident taxpayers within the East Greenbridge School District. Those ballots include a self-stamped paid envelope to return the ballots. Those ballots need to be received by June 9th at five o'clock. We're encouraging everybody as soon as they receive the ballot to vote, drop it in the mail and return it so that the district has received it by June 9th. However, if you are not registered to vote or have not voted over the past four years in a county or school district election, you can still register at the New York State Department of Motor Vehicles website. And this is in accordance with the governor's executive order. However, the last day to register is June 2nd. In order to vote, you need to be a citizen of the United States, 18 years of age, a resident of the district for 30 days preceding the date of the vote, and register to vote. Again, ballots have been issued via mail to all of our registered voters. We said that we wanted to get them out to the voters by May 29th. We exceeded our expectations and we got them out yesterday through a lot of direction from Mr. Edson, our business official, as well as all of our clerical staff who really pitched in to make that work. When you receive the ballot, you have to carefully follow the instructions. You have to mark your ballot with an X or a check. There should be no stray marks on the ballot. There's, this is an important step. On the back of the envelope you are provided, there is an affidavit statement which requires your signature. So everybody has to sign that. And Mr. Adam is putting out some information and some instructions on our website 
make sure that people are aware of that. If there are questions, you can also contact us here at the district office and ask to speak to the district clerk. The deadline is five o'clock on June 9th. Uh, different than other processes for voting and absentee ballots, it's not postmarked by June 9th, it's received by June 9th. So we're encouraging everybody to put their ballots in the mail the day that they get them. Here is a copy of what the envelope looks like so people can see what's required. After you mark the ballot, you place it in the envelope and you seal it. Very important. If you have more than one registered voter in your house, for example, a husband and a wife, maybe a student uh, age 18 or older, every one of those ballots needs to come back in its own individual envelope signed by the voter. So in some cases, we might want to be efficient and put all the ballots in the same envelope. If you can't do that, those votes will not be able to be counted. So we're providing a postage paid envelope for each registered voter uh, within each residence, and uh, each ballot will have to come back signed in an individual envelope by that voter. Typically, we have an opportunity for a second budget vote in New York State if the budget does not pass this year. There has been no indication that there will be a second vote date. And therefore, we're hoping that the community will support the budget first time around. In the event that we don't pass the budget, we have to approve a contingency budget. Under a contingency budget, the 1.5% tax levy cannot occur, increase cannot occur, and we will have to forego the revenue of 863,479 and make cuts on the expenditure side of the budget to non-mandated programs. And when we say non-mandated, it is frequently the case that just because something isn't mandated by state regulation doesn't mean it's not important to our community, to our students, and to our families. For example, advanced placement courses. We need sufficient staff to be able to maintain AP courses. We also want to ensure that our alternative education programs, such as Jumpstart, Columbia Alternative Education Program, and OG, these programs help support kids who may not graduate in four years through providing them with smaller class sizes, extra support. These three programs in combination with the excellence in our classrooms are reasons why our graduation rate is 96% but those programs are not required by state ed regulations. Our class sizes on average across the district are reasonable. Small class sizes are not mandated by state regulations. And we try to keep our class sizes as reasonable as we can within the resources that we have available to fund the staff. Social workers have proved to be critically important as more children are experiencing social and emotional issues in our country. In this particular budget, we are proposing an additional social worker for the middle school based on the caseloads of students that we are um, serving. The budget also includes two additional elementary classroom teachers because the enrollment has grown at Red Mill and Janae based on the uh, overall enrollment increase at the elementary school level which has been projected, as well as the attendance zone transition plan that alleviated the crowding at Belltop and moved some of those areas into Red Mill and to Janae. So we need two additional teachers to keep our class sizes about average across the district. One and a half percent increase to the levy means that we will, if approved by the district voters, yield additional revenue. However, we do not know how much that increase will impact the tax rates of individual homeowners. The tax rates are calculated in August. Tax rates are influenced by the overall town assessment of individual properties. There is a different rate for residential versus businesses in East Greenbush. The state establishes equalization rates, which is a measure of your property values and compared to state averages. And the New York State 
tax department can make changes in the way the taxes are calculated. All of those factors influence tax rates. Tax rates don't become available until August. We talked about use of the bus reserve. We are anticipating that the current fleet of 102 buses need, will need to be maintained, particularly as we look at not only transporting the kids to school now, but we may be faced with reducing the number of kids on certain buses to maintain ratios uh, in line with social distancing. These particular buses will be purchased through the reserve to replace buses that currently have high mileage, uh, in many cases are 10 to 12 years old, and we're putting a lot of money into maintaining those buses and keeping them on the road. And again, we're using monies that have been set aside so that we don't have to borrow and pay the principal and interest. We look at the mileage of the buses, we focus on student safety and staff safety. Newer buses are more fuel efficient, and we benefit from state transportation aid. The state will reimburse us 65% of the cost of a bus. So for every dollar we take out of the reserve to purchase a bus, we get 65 cents back on the dollar and we put that money right back in the transportation reserve to purchase buses in the future. Important dates to remember, uh, we are here on May 28th. Our budget vote will be June 9th. We talked a lot about the ballots and the voting process. And at this point, I thank you for your patience and your attention. And I'd like to take as many questions as you might have once I stop sharing the screen. You know, and it looks like we got a number of people back. So I appreciate that. I'm gonna start by taking a look at some of the questions in the chat room. And then I'm gonna ask Peter to uh, release the, the audio and I'll give everybody an opportunity to ask questions. And we'll do it in a certain order so we don't, uh, with the technology, talk over uh, each other. Mr. Simons, uh, um, I locked the door after a certain number of people came in. Would you like me to unlock the door or keep it like it is? Uh, I think we should probably keep it the way that it is, okay. given what happened earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a concern that I'm seeing in the chat room that two weeks for voters is uh, a concern uh, with mail delivery. One of the factors that one of the factors that affected the um, the information flow to the community was we didn't we didn't know much about the budget vote until just a few weeks ago. Uh, the regulations, the executive order came out, then the regulations had to be interpreted. And every district is on the same timeline governed by the executive order. There is a process by which we needed to print uh, at the expense of the district, all of the ballots that are being provided as well as the envelopes. And then we have to make sure that those ballots are in compliance with what the executive order is requiring. This is a completely brand new process. And therefore, we are um, we are ahead of our own timelines, but um, did not really know what was going to happen with the school budget vote until less than a month ago, now, probably about three weeks ago. Another another question is, when will we know if our state funding will be cut? It's a good question. When the final state budget was approved, the governor indicated that there would be three measurement periods at which the state would review the uh, impact of the economic conditions on the state's sales tax and income tax, and that within 10 days, the budget director of the state could make adjustments to school aid, unless the New York State Legislature intervened. So we went through the first measurement period and we didn't hear anything regarding reductions in state aid. The second measurement period ends on June 30th. Uh, we have been watching what has happened and at this point, including today, the governor has said he is not going to provide information to schools and local governments 
and hospitals until such time as he knows what may happen with federal support. So sometime between now and June 30th, we might know something. Uh, we may not know anything until September or later. And therefore we have asking the board, the, we asked the board to approve a budget that provides us with enough authority to be able to replace positions that are vacated by retirement, enough authority to be able to adjust our classrooms to the class sizes that the community expects, to maintain the AP and elective courses, to increase the social worker, and to make some other adjustments with an understanding that in the event that our state aid is cut, we will wait to fill positions in the district and see what happens. Uh, it's a conservative approach because we want to make sure that we don't turn around and cut programs and services to kids, raise class sizes, restrict offerings at the high school, only to find out that federal money comes back to the district. And then we've already made those reductions and then to add things back and change kids around into different classes would be significantly disruptive to the students and to our uh, community. The district also is in a stable financial position to be able to use reserves to some degree to offset any future state aid cuts. So uh, we've done this with a lot of thought, anticipating that we might reduce state aid, we might experience a reduction in state aid. And if so, we will use a combination of reserves and, and some other reductions to get through it. Uh, but we don't, simply not knowing right now whether, whether or not that will happen we erred on the side of caution. So why don't we take some questions uh, from people who may have questions or comments. And as we release the audio, why don't we go in order of school? So for example, if you're affiliated with Belltop in some way, we'll go in alphabetical order and we'll start with Belltop. So if there are any Belltop parents or community members out there, uh, who have a question, we'll start with anybody from Belltop. Mr. Simons, they could just unmute themselves. Okay. If you want to unmute yourself and you have a question or a comment, that would be a good time. No questions? How about anyone from Citizen Genet? Janae School? Nobody? DPS? Green Meadow? No questions? Hmm. About Red Mill? Cough Middle School? Somebody's got to ask me a really challenging question. Columbia High School? I have a question. Excellent. Okay, here's my question. I don't like the idea of putting my signature on the back of the envelope to be exposed because with all this identity theft, if we put a sticky note over it with tape, will the ballot still count? I don't believe so. <sighs> I'm gonna, I'll ask Mr. I'll ask Mr. Etzen, but that, that we, de we developed the ballot envelope in consultation with our attorneys who helped us to interpret the executive order there has not been a lot of state education department regulations about it. So I don't, I don't believe that would count. Larry, do you have a difference of opinion with me? I don't know that he made it back on. Okay. Okay, if you can just keep us posted on that because obviously I want my vote to count and I'll take a chance, but I am concerned about that. Maybe that's being over the top, but I just wanted to mention it. When you, when you say identity theft, can you clarify a little bit more about what you mean? I don't like the idea of somebody knowing what my signature looks like. Oh. Understand it's not getting my social security number out there or anything, but still I don't like the idea of somebody knowing what my signature looks like just in case. So 
if you can get back to us, we'd appreciate it. Okay, why don't you shoot me an email so that okay. I can address that question specifically? I'll look into it tomorrow and I'll send it back to you. When you say, and then clarify what you mean by putting a sticker over, you still be signing the sticker. No, what I'm saying is signing the actual envelope, but then taking a sticky note and folding it in half and then taping that sticky note onto the back of the envelope. So it will make it through the postal machine, but in essence, it covers my signature. So it would require the school to take that sticky note off, see my signature. Okay. I know it's complicated, but figured I'd out. I think, I think that might work. We'll, we'll look into it and I'll give you a clear answer after I research it. Okay, I will send you an email. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Any comments on the budget? Why not, the question was why not set up a ballot drop box? We had considered putting ballot drop boxes at each of the various polling sites, the schools that we typically use, which are, which are assigned by a voting district. Um, we are, it is unclear based on the governor's executive order whether that is permissible. Some districts were going to do that. We had thought about doing that. Uh, we got a little concerned about the security of the drop boxes given the fact that our staff is only at the buildings on a limited basis, and we're still considering it. We may have a drop box here at the administrative offices, but we're looking, we're looking into it. The ballots can be dropped off here at the district office. Any other questions or concerns? Well, I wanna thank all of you for joining us or rejoining us this evening. If you have a question or a concern and you wanna send me an email, uh, you feel free to do that. Um, we're hoping that people will um, respond to this new way of voting and that we have high participation in our budget and board election this year. I appreciate everybody's participation. And again, I wanna apologize for the disruption and the inappropriateness of the Zoom bombing that occurred earlier. Um, and maybe we'll have to do a second one of these, but again, the budget preserves all of our programs that we currently have in place at this time. Uh, it takes into account the anticipation that we may uh, receive notice that state aid would be reduced. Um, we are being cautious about replacing staff until we know what might happen but um, we want to continue to make our progress forward on our academic goals and our extracurricular programs and all the things that the community expects from the East Greenbrier School District. And so we're hoping that in addition to the budget passing, that the, any state aid that may be reduced would be offset by federal support to keep our district moving forward. And thank everybody for their participation this evening and thank you and I hope that you and your families and particularly um, all of you uh, and your friends are safe and healthy and have a good evening. Thank you.